Arena Free Presbyterian Church, we present Let the Bible Speak. It's good to have you with us today as we spend 15 minutes around the Word of God, preaching Christ in all His fullness. And this is Leslie Curran saying hello and welcome to the program. I'm delighted you're tuning in once again as the Reverend John Greer, minister of Ballymena Free Presbyterian Church, is back with us to let the Bible speak. Good morning and welcome to this another gospel program uh, coming to you from Ballymena Free Presbyterian Church. This is John Greer, minister of the congregation, and we're glad to have you tuning in today. I want to take the opportunity to let you know about our gospel mission that commences this evening in the will of God at 6.30pm, the time for our regular Sunday evening service. The mission goes on through the week ahead, Monday to Friday, each night 8pm, and over the next few weeks. We will keep you informed about the meetings. The evangelist is the Reverend Thomas Martin, Minister of Lisburn Free Presbyterian Church, and he will be preaching for us night by night in these special gospel meetings throughout our campaign. It is time to seek the Lord. Therefore, come and hear the preaching of the word and be blessed under the sound of God's glorious gospel. In John 4 and the verse number 4, we have this statement, and he must needs go through Samaria. The words indicate that the Lord Jesus Christ deliberately went through Samaria against all of the traditions and customs of his own people, the Jews. This very chapter tells us that the Jews and the Samaritans had no dealings one with another, and yet the Lord chose to go through Samaria at this time. He went there because he was going to evangelize, conduct a great evangelistic campaign in a city called Sychar, and therefore he must go to that city, and there he must preach the gospel. As we look at this entire passage where our text lies, we get a view of the Lord's evangelistic labor under certain points that stand out very clearly. And those points have to do with particular objects that were found as the Lord made his way through Samaria to that city of Sychar. There is the well. In verses 5 and 6, we read, of this well, it's called Jacob's Well, tells us it was given to his son Joseph. And there at that well, the Lord conducted his great evangelistic effort on this particular occasion. Now, in the Bible, the well is symbolic of God's salvation. It is actually amazing how many times you read of a well in the Word of God. We find in Genesis 21 that Abraham and Abimelech made a covenant at a well, a well called Beersheba. And there they sacrificed lambs, and there they made a covenant. And therefore, there is the thought of the covenant associated with the well in the Bible. And of course, God's salvation is based upon his great covenant of grace, that covenant that was sealed by the death of Christ, by the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. It was at a well that Rebekah was found as a wife for Isaac, as we see in Genesis chapter 24. And in that way, we are taught that the well is associated with the whole thought of the union that there is between the bridegroom and his bride. Isaac pictures Christ and Rebekah pictures the church. And we therefore see this truth taught of union and salvation between Christ and his bride. It was at a well that Moses rescued the seven daughters of the priest of Midian and therefore provided safety for them and security. And therefore, these are a few examples of the symbolism of the well. The point that is made is that sinners need to get to the well of salvation. In Isaiah 12 and verse number 3, it says, Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the well of salvation. The well of salvation is Christ himself. He is the one who's symbolized by the well. He's the one who's the fulfillment of this very interesting type, we might say. And therefore, we can certainly see that when the Lord came that day to that well at Sychar, in the land of Samaria, he was at a place, he was 
at an object that was clearly identified in Scripture as being associated with the salvation of sinners. Another well brings this out. That is the well also uh, called Beersheba, the one that we've noted already, where Abraham made the covenant with Abimelech. It's mentioned again in, in Genesis chapter 21, where Hagar was cast out, and she's wandering in the wilderness. She's lost in the wilderness. All her resources are gone. She's facing death. And yet it says there that God opened her eyes to see the well. You see, the point is the well was there all the time. That same well where Abraham and Abimelech made the covenant is the well to which uh, Hagar's eyes were opened. And the point is that salvation is there for you. If only your eyes were open to see it. Uh, men and women lost in their sin, blinded by the fall of man and unable to understand the things of God. And yet Christ is there. Christ is available. The well has been opened. The well has been dug. There is water, the water of life available for your soul. And if you will come to the well and drink, you will be eternally satisfied. Be like David, thinking of another well, when he cried these words in Second Samuel twenty three fifteen, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate, the well of Bethlehem. Bethlehem was the place where Christ was born. And therefore, in that sense, the well at Bethlehem pointed to the Lord Jesus. And David longed for a drink from that well. And there are words that you could take today and apply to your own soul. Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, the water of life that's found in Jesus Christ. So there was the well here in John 4. That's why the Lord went through Samaria, to come to this well. But then there's also the woman. A woman arrives at this well to draw water and the Lord dealt with her heart. She was a woman of great guilt. We find in the story that unfolds that she was a woman of an immoral, of an immoral character. She had fallen into sin, and therefore her whole life is guilty and stained with sin. And she is lost in that sin, and yet she comes to that well, this woman of great guilt, and she meets the Lord Jesus Christ, and she was shown great grace. We find, when we read the story carefully, that the Lord was at the well before her. He had arrived before she arrived. And therefore, while she was so guilty, yet at the same time, she was not seeking what she truly needed, even though she had heard of the Messiah, as the story shows us. But the Lord was waiting for her. Oh, what a wonderful view this is. Christ waiting for the woman. Salvation is unmerited by sinners and undeserved by sinners, and yet there's a Savior who seeks for them and who intersects their paths in life and brings them to himself. What great grace this is. The Lord was first at the well, and the Lord also was first to speak that day, and he did so in order to bring home to this woman her need and her sin, and have her recognize and, and understand that she needed a Savior. And therefore she heard of a great gift, because in verse 10 the Lord speaks of the gift of God, as he referred to the well and its water, the gift of God. And of course he's talking about the water of life that he gives to sinners. He is revealing to this woman that salvation is a gift, and how true that is. Those very same words, the gift of God, they're used in various places with regard to salvation. Romans 6.23 says that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And in Romans 5 we read of the gift by grace, the free gift, the gift of righteousness. But remember something, though salvation is a gift to men, it was bought at a great cost. It uh, incurred a tremendous price, even the price of the sufferings, the death, the bloodshedding of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You are of great guilt as a sinner. You can receive great grace and enjoy the great gift of God 
as it is offered to you in the Lord Jesus. The gift of salvation, the gift of God's grace to guilty men and fallen women. Oh, come today and seek that blessed and wonderful uh, salvation that's found in Jesus Christ and in him alone. So there is the well and there is the woman. And then there's also here, of course, the water. Because in the Lord's dealings with the woman, the issue of the water became progressively central. There was, of course, the matter of water of the physical kind in terms of the well, the woman's intention to draw the water and her water pot and the Lord's desire for a drink. All these details tell us about the water. But in all of this, there was water of another kind altogether. And we find that water in the Bible, just like the well, points us to salvation. Water is universally essential. No man can live without water. No man can be saved without Christ. Water comes down from heaven. The Lord Jesus came down from heaven. And notice here that it's called living water. The Lord refers in verse 10 to living water. And in the Bible, living water is a symbol of of the Holy Spirit of God, as we find in different scriptures. And the thought is that it is the Spirit of God who takes the things of Christ and brings them home to the soul and gives the sinner that everlasting life that is found in Jesus Christ and in him alone. And today we would therefore urge you to think about the water of life that's found in Christ. In verses 13 and 14 of this chapter, the Lord said to the woman, whosoever drinketh of this water, that's the world's water, shall thirst again. There's no satisfaction in sin. There's no uh, remedy for the soul to be found in this world. The world will leave you empty. It will leave you dry and parched. It will leave you with a thirst always. You'll never find any satisfaction in sin. But he goes on to say, But whosoever drinketh of this water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Dear sinner, I pray today that you will see that there is water that will satisfy your soul. Christ saves, Christ delivers from the power of sin. Christ takes away the very desire for sin. And therefore, let your plea be today, the plea of this woman, give me this water. May you seek for it, may you come to Christ, and may you drink deeply at the well of God's salvation. You've been listening to Let the Bible Speak. If we can be of any further spiritual help, we invite you to contact us via our website at www.balaminafpc.org, on our Facebook at facebook.com forward slash balaminafpc, or via our phone number 2565-2895. You may hear Mr. Greer preach each Lord's Day here in Balamina Free Presbyterian Church at 11.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. We assure you of a warm welcome at all of the services and look forward to having you with us. Thank you for listening today. May the Lord richly bless you. And don't forget to tune in next week at the same time as once again we turn to the Scriptures and let the Bible speak.